Hello, my name is Tom Scher. I'm an NDSU Extension Agricultural Engineer, specializing in irrigation, drainage, and water quality. You know, together with my colleague, Dr. Hans Gundel, we have been doing tile drainage design workshops for about 20 years. And most of them have been here in the valley, which you can see behind me. Uh, it's mostly pattern tile, where they're in parallel uh, units, uh, using drain tile like this, um, where we, uh, four inch is pretty common, although there's other sizes, and it's buried at about three to three and a half feet. And we uh, been doing the design work on how to get that, and almost every system installed here in the valley as is a uh, response to precipitation events, whether there's snow melt in the spring or rainfall later on. But Kelly asked me to talk about some of the surprises we run into. And that's where you're getting water into the tile system that's not part of the normal precipitation and responds differently. So we don't usually have that problem here in the valley, which you can see behind me. I'm standing on Hans's uh, research plots, which is uh, pattern tiled. But if you get farther west, where you're in the Coteau region, uh, where we have the transition from this old lake bed up into the beach ridge area, that's where we start running into some uh, extraneous water problems. And to give you an example, um, I got some uh, surprises that we've run into. The first one, I'm gonna start up in Manitoba. Uh, a colleague of mine up there was called in on a project where it was a flat field like you see behind me. Uh, it looked perfectly flat, the soil looked uniform, the installer did his due diligence, looked at all the soils, looked at how to install the system, and then put in the drain tile because the farmer was having trouble getting in to uh, plant and, and to harvest. Well, they turned on, they had, because it's flat, they had to use a lift station, and when they turned the lift station on, it ran continuously, 24-7, 365. And after several months of this, uh, the local uh, municipality got concerned because they thought that flowing water in the wintertime was going to freeze up all the culverts in the area and contribute to local flooding. So my colleague was called in to look at the situation and they monitored the site, took soil samples, did some deep boring, and then mapped it with an uh, electromagnetic device that can go down several, quite a few feet. And what they found is underneath that field is a shallow uh, vein of uh, sand and gravel underneath that wasn't very thick, but it was like the fingers on a hand going out under that field. And the installer happened to put the lift station right in the middle of the wrist. And so in effect, what they were doing is the main, it wasn't the tile up above, it was the main down below, the deeper part that was actually tapped into that area and was pulling out a lot of excess water. So that's one, of, one surprise. The second surprise is out here to the west, uh, west, little west of Castleton, west of the ethanol plant. Uh, we monitored eight sites in the Red River Valley for four years, measuring the flow and uh, water quality of uh, tile drainage. And this site out there never did flow uh, as expected. It was always much, much less than we expected, even with large rainfall events. Although some of the field was affected most of it wasn't, uh, it was kind of scattered. And in the flood of 2009, we found out that that was a major flow path for water coming uh, across country during the spring floods. And in fact, that spring, we found gravel out in that field about two or 300 feet out away from the road where it had overtopped the road. So we finally surmised that there were probably rivulets of gravel and sand and gravel underneath the soil that was draining away the water. And so it was helping with the tile, but it just wasn't handling some of the spots. Our next surprise was uh, south of here. Uh, a farmer had a low spot in the field. He had some topography um, down uh, north of Lisbon in which uh, he had this low spot and it was always interfering with his farming operation and it was always wet so he tiled it 
And then, just like the experience up in Canada, uh, they turned on the pump and it ran continuously. It ran for months. And it wasn't a lot of flow, but it was uh, enough to, again, uh, run throughout the year. And when they investigated, they found out that uh, in the upper part of the field, there's a, it's a soil with a lot of sand and gravel, and there was a recharge site, and there were some perched water tables. And so it was draining down by lateral flow down towards that low spot. And before they tiled, it had probably reached some kind of equilibrium. But after they tiled, they lowered the water table, and then this water started draining down. And that's why it was continuously running. Um, our next surprise was a little farther south than that, along the Cheyenne River. Uh, there's a sandy area there near the river that uh, again is always wet in the spring and the fall and poses problems so they tiled it and then they put in an outlet which drained directly down into the Cheyenne River. Well when they put in the outlet pipe it was a perforated uh, 15 inch pipe that carried the outflow down into the river and, and the, they had lift station up on top but what happened is they could the, the flow coming out of there was continuous. It's just like the other ones. So we're getting water from somewhere else and it wasn't coming from the pump because that was shut off. It wasn't the laterals in the field that were only three to three and a half feet down. What it was is the there was this aquifer when they had cut through the bank they cut through a clay barrier that had held back the aquifer and the aquifer was flowing down and getting into the outlet, the perforated outlet pipe and draining out part of the aquifer. And so the State Water Commission became very concerned because that aquifer is also used for irrigating that land because it's a sandy soil. So the last surprise I want to talk about is in the Oaks, Milner, Winemere, Brampton area. This is a backwater area where the glaciers had outwash. And so you have layers of clay, layers of sand, layers of silt, all kind of mixed together. Kind of think of it like a big unruly stack of pancakes. And I have a graphic which kind of shows a cross section of part of the oaks and you can see where you have these different layers kind of fixed, uh, interleaved in there. So again, uh, water always takes the easiest path. So if you're, uh, some fields have been tiled down there where they started running because when you lowered the water table you changed the equilibrium and water in these sand veins probably started coming from some surrounding areas contributing to the flow. So a lot more water was coming out than what you would expect from just rain and snow. The other thing is, is in a lot of these fields because you got this silt and clay and sand intermixed there's some areas of the field where you could probably put the tile 100 feet apart and then others where you have to go 25 feet apart because the silt holds uh, the water and the clay. And that's where my recommend, the take home from all this talk is that when you're in this transition area outside the valley, you really have to do some field research. You have, the first place to talk to is local knowledge. If somebody's been working that field for a long period of time, they can tell you where the wet spots are and, and you can probably figure out why they might be wet in those areas. Then look at the surrounding topography. Water always moves downhill. So if there's a gravel pit a mile away that's on a higher elevation, you can bet that when you get rain, it penetrates and then it's going to move by gravity down to the low spots. Uh, and the third thing is to just uh, do a real good check of the soils in the area. Um, and again, that you can visit with local knowledge or you can uh, look at the soil surveys to get some idea where to start. But those are my recommendations and some of the surprises that we've run into with tile drainage. Mm -hmm.